بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آل اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ یو ول ناٹ بی انجوائنگ ان دا پریزنٹ سرکمسٹانسز ان دا لاک ڈاؤن سچویشن بٹ وی کانٹ ہیلپ اٹ سو اٹس اے پری ریکارڈیڈ لیکچر اینڈ دا ٹاپک از انیمیا وچ از این ایکسٹریملی امپارٹنٹ ٹاپک اینڈ دا موسٹ کامن ڈس آڈر ایز فیر ایز دی بلڈ ڈیزیز از کنسرن Now, first of all, the definition of anemia. I will go through the definition and then I'll explain it. Uh, it is the decrease in red cell count in hematocrit leading to decrease in hemoglobin according to age and sex, resulting in decreased oxygen carrying capacity of blood. Now, first of all, there is decrease in three parameters. One is the red cell count and then hematocrit. What is hematocrit? It is indirect evidence of red cell count or volume. By definition, hematocrit is the number of RBCs per liter volume of blood. It means in one liter how many RBCs are present. And that results actually in decrease in the hemoglobin. And Physiologically speaking, that would result in the decrease in the oxygen carrying capacity of RBCs or hemoglobin or blood itself. Now, you know that most important function, of course, of the hemoglobin is to carry oxygen. Uh, in oxygenated blood, oxy oxygenation from the lungs and then to the heart, left side of the heart, and then it is pumped to the peripheral circulation where oxygen um, is supplied to the tissues of the body. So, uh, when there is decrease in hemoglobin, definitely there is decreased oxygen carrying capacity resulting in tissue hypoxia uh, as a result of anemia. Now, uh, we will first go through the classification uh, which is of two types. One is based on red blood cell morphology and the other one is based on uh, the underlying mechanisms. Now, before we elaborate the classification, we need to know the normal levels of hemoglobin, the red cell count, and the hematocrit. Now, because this is important, until unless you know the normal ranges in adult male and female, and then according to age, especially in the newborn, you will not be able to interpret uh, the decrease or sometimes even increase in these parameters. Now, uh, in hemoglobin, we have range from 14 to 18 grams per dl, and that actually uh, may be slight variation depending upon uh, different laboratories. It, sometimes it may be mentioned 13.5 to 18. Uh, females, 12 to 16 grams per dl, and in the newborn, it ranges from 18 to 22 grams per dl. It is definitely higher because of the high RBC count. Hematocrit. Uh, uh, ranges in adult male from 42 to 50 uh, uh, percent, uh, in females 36 to 47, and in newborn, since the RBC count is high, it is between 52 to 64. Uh, the RBC count is in million per microliter, 4.5 to 5.8 males, adults, and female adults 3.8 to 4.6, and the newborn high, of course, 4.8 to 6.5 millions per microliter. <coughs> now, talking about the classification, the most important being based on morphology of the RBCs. Now, we divide this conventionally into three groups, normocytic, normochromic, microcytic, hypochromic, and macrocytic. Now, coming to the first one, normocytic, normochromic. Now, remember at this stage, otherwise also in normal individuals, the red cell morphology is normocytic and normochromic, but there the hemoglobin level is normal. When we say normocytic normochromic anemia, it means that although the morphology is normocytic normochromic, but the hemoglobin level is low. So it can be seen in a disease state with low hemoglobin. Now the size is important. Size of RBC is normally uh, the parameter used is mean corpuscular volume, which actually determines the size of the RBCs. And the normal range being 80 to 96 femtoliter. 
Now, there is a long list of causes of normocytic normochromic anemias. For example, acute blood loss. Here, what happens? Uh, heavy trauma, uh, roadside accidents, bullet injury, uh, surgery that will result in loss of blood and loss of RBCs, resulting in low hemoglobin and anemia. Uh, then we have aplastic anemia, which is not so common but very important disease of the bone marrow. There is uh, failure of the bone marrow at the pluripotent stem cell level. So all cell lines are decreased. Uh, and sparse and of course that also results in anemia. Leukemias and lymphomas, uh, these are the blood malignancies and here also we have normocytic chromochromic blood picture. Anemia of chronic disease, very common and important condition, uh, the, mainly the in underlying infections but we may have malignancies, chronic inflammatory disorders like rheumatoid arthritis. The mechanism I may explain of course in the next slide. Hemolytic anemia is a very large group. Now you know that the normal lifespan of RBCs is 120 days. But in certain situations, this may be inherited or acquired once. The uh, uh, lifespan of RBCs is decreased and there is excessive hemolysis. This may be in the, within the vessels or outside the vessels or in the um, spleen. Certain endocrine disorders, thyroid disorders, and uh, this uh, adrenal gland disorders, they can also result in normocytic normochromic anemia. Likewise, malignancies, other than hematological malignancies, they all give rise to uh, primarily normocytic normochromic blood picture. Chronic renal diseases, because of the decrease in erythropoietin, the RBCs uh, are not, of course, uh, developing and their amount decreases. Now remember at this stage one thing is normocytic, that is the size and roughly the, uh, the, uh, in the stained preparation of blood, the size of RBCs is equal to small lymphocyte or slightly less than small lymphocyte. When we say normochromic, what does it mean? It means <coughs> excuse me, that the hemoglobin or hemoglobinization within the RBC is normal. Now here you will see that these are the normocytic cells and the central area of pallor in a stained film is one third or less than one third. This actually determines how much hemoglobin is there. If the hemoglobin is le less, then this staining area uh, will be less and the pallor area will be increased. So the size, the normocytic is roughly the size of the uh, small lymphocytes. So these are three important uh, causes, aplastic anemia due to bone marrow failure, blood loss anemia and hemolytic anemia. Uh, this is another slide you can see here that these are normocytic normochromic cells in um, a young child. Now coming to the another very important group, microcytic hypochromic. Here, as the name indicates, the size of the RBC is decreased and also the hemoglobinization within the RBC is also less, that is hypochromic. Now, I have already mentioned that size is determined by mean corpuscular volume or MCV. It is usually less than 80 femtoliter and the MCH mean corpuscular hemoglobin, that is the average hemoglobin in all RBCs is less than 27 picogram and the range is between 27 to 32 picogram. Uh, four uh, very important uh, causes of uh, microcytic hypochromic anemias, iron deficiency anemia on top of the list. Then we have thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia, anemia of chronic disease. Now, iron deficiency anemia is the commonest type of anemia worldwide, not only uh, in the developing countries, but also in the developed uh, nations. Uh, there, the cause is mainly the chronic blood loss. So, that is the commonest cause of microcytic hypochromic anemia. Thalassemia is an inherited condition, is, is hemolytic anemia, where this quantitative deficiency of hemoglobin and the, uh, you know that hemoglobin has heme YT and then they have, we have a globin chains, the alpha and beta. So there are two alpha chains and two beta chains in uh, adults. 
these quantitative deficiencies of either beta chains or alpha chains resulting in uh, either beta thalassemia or alpha thalassemia. Most of the hemolytic anemias, they give rise to normocytic normochromic blood picture. But thalassemia can also give rise to hyperchromic and microcytic blood picture. Sideroblastic anemia may be inherited ones. It may be acquired. It may be idiopathic. Now, usually when we say microcytic hyperchromic anemia, sideroblastic anemia is inherited one. There is a, a defect in the RN metabolism where RN is deposited within the mitochondria of the RBCs in the form of a ring and they are unable to uh, be available for the uh, heme synthesis. Anemia of chronic uh, disease or infections, uh, this can give rise to normocytic normochromic uh, blood picture but also in some situations, especially in the underlying infections, microcytic hypochromic. Uh, the mechanism is complex, but just remember here, I'll, I'll uh, let you know uh, uh, later also that decrease in erythropoietin, decrease sensitivity to erythropoietin, the more bone marrow and the uh, mobilization of iron from macrophages to the developing erythroblast is decreased. Now, when we say hypochromic, it means that there is less hemoglobin within the RBCs. And uh, when there is less hemoglobin, the staining area uh, is also less, so it remains unstained. Uh, it becomes more than one third of the diameter of the RBCs, which is unstained, and then we call it hypochromic. Now, in the hypochromic, you can see uh, that uh, the RBCs are small, and since hemoglobin is very less, so there is in paler area is more or hypochromia. This is another good slide. This usually you see in severe form of iron deficiency where you have also poikilocytosis. Poikilocytosis means variation in shape. So you can see the teardrop cells, mishappen cells and uh, apart from a microcytic hypochromia. This is one target cell. And uh, variation in size is in fact a nisocytosis, where you have small cells, where you have normal cells, uh, and so on. Now here also you can see small cell with hypochromic uh, any appearance like this. Now, the third important group is the macrocytic anemia, as the name indicates. It means the cell size is large. And I told you the normal range of uh, RBC size or mean corpuscular volume is between uh, roughly 80 to 96 femtoliter. If it is above 96, usually like 100 femtoliter, we call it macrocytosis. Now, we conventionally divide this group of anemias into two broad categories. One is macrocytosis with megaloblastic bone marrow and other one is macrocytosis with normoblastic bone marrow. Now, when we say with megaloblastic bone marrow, what does it mean? It is because of vitamin B12 or folic acid deficiency. Now, what is the function of this B12 and folic acid? This is needed for DNA synthesis within the uh, of course, the developing cells, including uh, the precursors of red cells um, called erythroblasts. So, when there is deficiency of B12 or folic acid, DNA synthesis is defective or delayed, and we have immature forms of the red cell precursors called megaloblasts. They tend to die early within the uh, bone marrow, causing anemia. And those who reach to maturity, they are abnormal cells called macrocytic cells. Now, there is another group, macrocytosis with normoblastic bone marrow. There is a long list of this. What does it mean? means that there is no megaloblastic change. There is no B12 or folic acid deficiency. But there are other underlying mechanisms like chronic liver disease, chronic alcoholism, which is seen mostly in West, hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism usually needs, uh, causes normocytic normochromic blood picture, but it can also cause macrocytosis. Hemolytic anemias, again, normocytic normochromic in case of thalassemia, microcytic hypochromic may be there, but sometimes macrocytosis is there because of the presence of increased amount of reticulocytes, which are immature RBCs because they are showered into the peripheral blood as a reflex phenomena 
and the this these reticulocytes are the large cells chronic cigarette smoking gives hypoxic environment uh, in the lungs and this uh, um, causes uh, macrocytosis then we have less important sideroblastic anemia post hemorrhagic myelodysplastic syndrome i will not go into detail uh, aplastic anemia already mentioned uncommon uh, mainly it leads to normal cytic normochromic but another important one is chronic obstructive airway disease and uh, here in this case this uh, disease of the respiratory passages and the lungs and uh, as a result of this there is hypoxic environment in the lungs and there is less oxygenation of the uh, cells and this uh, results in macrocytic blood picture now these are the macrocytes they are larger than normal of course uh, like this one uh, if you compare it with this normal cytic and sometimes they be very large and oval in shape like this one this one so uh, these are all macrocytic cells now i told you that if this is because of b12 and folic acid deficiency then you have megaloblastic bone marrow so megaloblastic will appear like this this is a primitive uh, dna synthesis primitive cells the the maturation of dna is delayed the cytoplasmic maturation is normal but dna maturation is delayed so they tend to die they are larger cells and tend to die earlier within the bone marrow causing anemia likewise in other cells in the myeloid the white cell series they are also large and abnormal so they will appear like this macrocytic cells and another important thing you will see hyper segmentation of the neutrophils normally the neutrophils have 3 to 4 lobes here you will see it's more than 4 One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is one of the feature of megaloblastic anemia. <coughs> Now this was the classification based on morphology of RBCs or its hemoglobinization. There is another classification which is based on underlying mechanisms, and there is a long list of that. Blood loss anemias, for example, acute hemorrhage. I've already mentioned this may result in blood loss along with that there is loss of the rbcs so that will result in decrease in the hemoglobin sometimes there is a chronic blood loss over months and years for example uh, bleeding peptic ulcers bleeding hemorrhoids worm infestations or carcinoma of the large intestine they all bleed and slowly and slowly the blood is lost within the stools and over the period of many months to years there will be iron deficiency anemia then there is a condition defective red cell production then there is increased hemolysis called increased destruction and then you have multiple mechanisms now coming to uh, the defective production uh, aplastic anemia i have already mentioned Uh, the, it's a stem cell disorder at the bone marrow level. What stem cell? The pluripotent stem cell, the very first or multipotent stem cell, which give rise to progenitor cells, then the committed cells, and then the uh, precursors of uh, various cells like RBCs, uh, the white cells, the lymphocytes, and so on. So the defect is at that pluripotent or multipotent stem cell. in chronic renal disease uh, we have decrease in erythropoietin and you know that erythropoietin mostly the source is the kidneys when there is a chronic disease of the kidney that function is partially or completely sometimes lost and erythropoietin you know that it acts on the bone marrow uh, rbc precursor cells to produce rbcs defective dna synthesis i have already mentioned B12 or folic acid deficiency because they are important in DNA synthesis. Decrease heme production. Uh, you know what happens in the um, iron deficiency that uh, iron is not available for heme synthesis and for heme moiety you know that uh, iron is essential and iron with iron there is attachment of two molecules of oxygen. defective globin synthesis thalassemia again is a quantitative deficiency of hemoglobin because either the beta globin chains are being not being formed or the alpha chains are not being formed now this is the bone marrow of a patient with a uh, aplastic anemia this is a defined biopsy normally you see that uh, 
these spaces are now they are the fat spaces normally they are filled with blood cells but here you see the blood cells in the bone marrow are very sparse and all replaced by the fat tissue and that what you see in the aplastic anemia because the cells are not being produced by the pluripotent stem cell now increased destruction this another large group after defective production now increased destruction means hemolysis excessive hemolysis is again divided into intravascular hemolysis or extravascular hemolysis when we say intravascular hemolysis it means hemolysis or destruction of red blood cells within the blood vessels and extravascular hemolysis outside the blood vessels that is in the spleen now again further divided into intrinsic red blood cell defect and the extrinsic defect now when we say intrinsic defect it means defect within the rbcs you know rbcs have a membrane and when you go inside the rbcs it is divided of nucleus but we have the hemoglobin and a uh, number of enzymes so the defect may be within the membrane a very important inherited condition known as hereditary spherocytosis there is another condition known as hereditary elliptocytosis now if we talk about hemoglobin if there is a defect in hemoglobin this may be a qualitative defect known as sickle cell anemia where abnormal hemoglobin called uh, hemoglobin s is formed then thalassemia already mentioned this abnormal hemoglobin is quantitatively deficient and here uh, there is another hemoglobin is formed called hemoglobin f enzyme deficiencies we have two important enzymes g6pd and pyruvate kinase so they are important in the metabolism going on uh, within the rbcs proximal nocturnal hemoglobin urea this is very important acquired condition now this membrane defect or hemoglobin defect or enzyme defect they are the inherited conditions but this is the only hemolytic anemia uh, uh, due to the acquired membrane defect not the intrinsic membrane defect